This is a book review of the Invincible Iron Man Epic Collection, Volume 3, The Man Who Killed Tony Stark, Goodwin, Tusker, as well as Craig. Don't know why they left poor old Craig off that. Volume 3, 1968 to 1970, includes Iron Man 2 to 24, came out in 2019, and it's about 475 pages. There is not much bonus material, very limited, predominantly in colour. So you've got some great stories. You've got a few duff stories as well. Also, you've got quite a few really duff villains, or repetitive villains, I would say. Ones that are like unstoppable creatures, of course, Iron Man ends up stopping. I'm never too keen on those stories. Anyway, a lot of brilliant artwork from Johnny Craig, and that's worth the book. Johnny Craig, I love Johnny Craig's work from EC. Also, loved working here. Also, there's George the Tusker as well. So, what's in it? First story, The Demolisher. Mm. Not a great story. That's issue Iron Man, issue two. Then into issue three, you've got the freak. Poor old Happy Hogan turns into the freak again. Again, very similar to Demolisher, like Crusher, like Ultimo. There's a sort of uh, too many of these unstoppable creatures that poor old Iron Man has to face. Unicorn turns up. Well, the unicorn turns up singly at first. Later on in the book, turns up with the red ghost. Now, the red ghost and all poor old unicorn have a career of failing pretty badly most of the time. But it's still good stories. The Invincible Iron Man, Frenzy in a Far-Flung Future. Well, that's an odd story. This one is George Tusker does the artwork. Also weirdly inking by Johnny Craig. I don't know why they changed over this point. However, good story in the future. And a lovely ending as well. An ending that I think should have been continued on a lot later. However, I don't know if it ever was, if they ever rounded that storyline off. And it was good. Now, another, The Crusher. So you gain this re quite repetitive villains in this sort of start. And there was other ones. However, it did slightly change. You've got the Gladiator. Now, the Gladiator turns up, and the Gladiator, of course, is a daredevil villain, generally. However, I think Iron Man was a, it was a good fit with Iron Man. The Gladiator, because he does give him a good run for his money. It's a good story. And of course, there's the Magyar's involvement, Gia, or however they say it. The Green Goliath. Now, this story is an unusual one. Uh, brilliantly drawn. And it's, of course, got the Mandarin. This is a storyline where you've got uh, the Mandarin involved. Mandarin's always turning up. Mandarin turned up a lot in his early days of Iron Man. Don't think he's such a regular villain now, but he was a regular back then. Also, another very repetitive. You probably had the Ultimo. Now he's got these living stack face, my living statues. So it's a bit of a storyline. But again, Iron Man, Iron Man, of course. There's some subtle twists in the story. So I'm just going. Then we're onto the controller, and I love the controller story. Controller now, dramatic start bit there with. Obviously, coming of the controller. Controller, of course, was a great character with Thanos a lot later in the Captain Marvel comic. So you've got the controller there. Captives of the controller. The controller can obviously control people, puts this thing onto their heads, and basically he can drain their strength. So he's doing pretty well for himself in that. Of course, then you've got another villain that's sort of similar to all of the others, even though it has got a lovely, I love the artwork. Johnny Craig, just brilliant. This one is The Night Phantom Walks. Great story, very dramatic cover as well. The Night Phantom Walks. And, but unfortunately, a bit like The Crusher, a bit like Demolisher, he's just a non sort of villain, really, ultimately. Into the unicorn again. The unicorn's got the red ghost. Poor old red ghost. He doesn't know what to do. Of course, ever since he lost the uh, his super apes, who knows? Oh, there's some apes. Turn up in this storyline. Unicorn again. And then you go into the Madam Mask story, which I quite liked. Like those stories. And you've got Midas as well. Yeah. A few problems. Poor old Tony Stark has some problems. Not going to say what sort of problems, but he definitely has some issues. And, of course, you've got the lovely... Madam Mask turns up to help things along with Kim Midas. Then, after that story, we've got a weird one, Lucifer. 
the Lucifer story is very odd. Lucifer comes back. And, well, Lucifer is an unusual character, of course, the X-Men story early on. And let's go for the Lucifer story. It's OK. But then you get into the Titanium Man and the Crimson Dynamo. Slightly different armour as well for the Crimson Dynamo. Real good story, though. All the same. I am the Titanium Man, etc., etc. A pretty big guy. You wouldn't want to face him on a dark night. However, the next story is a bit of a down after all of that. You've got this, <laughs> the mercenary. You've got the mercenary character. Very, yeah, non sort of character. But he's got very, a <laughs> bit of artwork. That's one of the weirdest bits of artwork, I have to say. With these sort of white and blue and yellow dots all over the scene. Then into the Minotaur character, with Madame Mask again. Of course, Jasper is falling in love, obviously, with Madame Mask at this point. However, the bonus material at the back is pretty non-starter. I have to say, very disappointing. The Iron Man Volume 2 is similar. I don't know why, but maybe they just didn't store a lot of the Iron Man material. However, this is still some absolutely full of some brilliant stories, even if the villains were a bit, at times, repetitive start. However, I still loved them. So, Iron Man, Epic, Volume 3.